Hi, welcome to another Women at Google uh, speaker event. Today we are having a panel discussion with the Institute of International Education on empowering women through technology in the Middle East and North Africa. And we have seven panelists from seven different regions uh, in that area. So I'm going to have Heather Ramsey from the Institute do an introduction and um, hope you guys enjoy the event today. At the end, we'll have some Q&A, so if you can be sure to ask your question in the microphone so people on YouTube can hear your question, that would be great. Thanks. Thank you very much, Pepe. My name is Heather Ramsey, and I'm from the Institute of International Education in San Francisco, and I'm Program Director for the Women in Technology Program for the Middle East and North Africa. And first, I'd like to say thank you for, uh, to everyone at Google for welcoming us here today so warmly, especially to Yasmina Brihi and Pepe Yu for arranging such an educational and interesting day for us. <clears throat> the Middle East, the Women in Technology Program in the Middle East and North Africa is funded by the Middle East Partnership Initiative at the U.S. Department of State. And we're, we're happy to have Kit Bartels here today from the U.S. Department of State. The Women in Technology program, which we call WIT, was designed by the IIE West Coast Center in San Francisco and is implemented in collaboration with local partners in nine countries in the Middle East and North Africa. <clears throat> the Women in Technology program has two main goals. The first is to provide more access and opportunity to women in the Middle East and North Africa in order to enhance their marketable skills, allowing them to gain more economic independence and to increase the power of the private sector in building de democratic societies. The second goal is to increase women's participation in building pluralistic societies through civic civil society strengthening activities. To date, the Women in Technology program has empowered more than 4,000 women in the region, and, and including empowerment of 50 women's organizations through trainings and activities focused on information technology, professional development, and business skills. I'm thrilled today to announce that in collaboration with Google, from today on, we will be training participants in the Women in Technology program in the Middle East and North Africa on the Google Blogger tool. So today you'll get to meet the faces and forces behind the Women in Technology program, our program managers from the Middle East and North Africa. It is due to their passion and dedication to this project that Women in Technology will reach more than 10,000 women by 2010. So now I'd like to pass it over to Yasmina Brihu, who will be moderating the panel. She's the marketing director for Google uh, in the Middle East and North Africa. Thank, thank you, you, Heather. Thank you. So thank you all for being here. Um, I think I recognize some familiar faces from the Arabic team. Thank you for making it. Um, so as, as Heather was saying, my name is Yasmina Brihi. I'm the regional marketing manager for Google in the Middle East and North Africa. So this is a region that I'm obviously very close to and that I live and breathe on a daily basis as part of my job. Um, but this is also a topic, today's topic is a topic that's very close to my heart. Um, because I myself am a woman from the Middle East. I'm Lebanese, I was born and raised in Lebanon. And I grew up being acutely aware of the need to empower women in, in MENA, in the Middle East and North Africa, and to provide them with the opportunities and the ability to grow and develop um, that they need, that they want, and that they deserve. So without further ado, we have seven great women here with us today um, from seven different countries in MENA. So, why don't we start with a quick round of introductions, um, and why don't you tell us a bit about yourselves, where you come from, and how you first got involved with women's issues and with technology. Do you want to get us started? It's on. Doesn't? Yeah, it works. Uh, I'm Abir Aidi from Sultanate of Oman. I'm the Women Technology Program Manager. Uh, I got involved in women issues uh, through this program. This program gave me the experience to explore to the to more uh, w women's issues in our country. And you're from? From Sultanate of Oman. 
Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Iman Taraune. I'm the country program manager for women in technology in Jordan. Um, how I came to, to the women issues and development and so forth, um, I have experience with the Ministry of Planning International Cooperation in Jordan. And I also worked with Women for Women International. And, and that introduced me to um, the, 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 the need uh, of women, uh, women's empowerment in our uh, region. So uh, I would also like to thank you all for joining us today and for taking the time to be with us. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Widad El Hanafi. I'm from Morocco. And uh, I came across the issue, uh, working on the issue of women, uh, basically through my first experience, which was on governance and democracy with the National Democratic Institute. And uh, now with my experience with uh, IIE through the Women in Technology program. And this is mainly uh, due to my interest to, uh, in, the, uh, in the area of IT and also to help women uh, enhance their capacities and skills in the IT area. Thank you. Hello everyone, Salam alaikum. Uh, I am Lina Leriani, I am from Yemen, and I am the program manager. Uh, how I became involved in technology, actually I was involved in uh, women issues for a long time, and I worked with Oxfam for some time with raising women awareness about their rights and um, the personal status law in Yemen. Uh, then when I came back, I was studying in the US for two years, and I went back, I found out about this program, and you start to realize that uh, IT has become has an essential tool, and nobody can find, no woman, so whether it's a man or a woman, they cannot find the job unless they have uh, IT skills. That's why I became very much interested in, in a program that uh, train women in IT, that give them more chances to find jobs and uh, build their economic uh, situation. Uh, I am Imam Mohammed. I represent uh, Saudi Arabia as a program manager for the WET program. Personally, I'm passionately interested in uh, developing women and I've been working in a community service center um, for a long time now and, and I think uh, WET program. So I'm actually, I've been involved in more than one uh, project in development as well as training of trainers and so on. I'm, my belief is that this, when um, my um, institution organization I belong to now to, I have a college in Saudi Arabia, you know, have been offered to become a partner or a lead organization. We felt like this is a huge opportunity for helping ladies in Saudi Arabia um, to become better. The IT um, is a, a field that is interesting and is developing and professional development uh, individually is essential to all women to be able to express their opinion and so on. So uh, my personal passion, as well as the opportunity of my job has allowed me to become part of it. I'm, I'm so happy about that, thanks. Hi everyone, I'm Khulud Jaberi. I'm the country program manager for Bahrain. Uh, the reason why I joined the women and technology team is uh, since the launch of reforms in 2002 by our king, um, women are seeking more power in Bahrain economically and socially. So I'm out there to help women and create more chances for them. Hello, I'm Nada Hamzi from Lebanon. Uh, I've been involved in women empowerment program since uh, 1990. I've been working for an NGO for 10 years. Uh, but uh, working for a special program for uh, women empowerment in technology, especially for Lebanon, it was a challenge for me. That's what I, uh, I joined with. Excellent. That's fine. So, great. Thank you very much. We now have, uh, you know, the, the names and the characters behind the, the names, rather. So, what is it like being a woman in the Middle East today? So, Lina, maybe you can start us off in the context of Yemen. What, is, what are the challenges that women face, and what is, what is the social status of women in, in, in Yemen like? Well, I'll start with the, with the positive picture. <laughs> For, I, I think we have made a, a long strides in the last 20 years, but uh, regarding education, participation in the labor market, uh, participation in politics, but still there are a lot of challenges we are still facing. Let's say that uh, in education, for education, we have only 34% of women are educated. And uh, many of those women, they cannot, they cannot go to the labor, they cannot work, they are still, uh, the education is very low, 
the low quality of education is not enabling them, them to find jobs because uh, now the only provider of jobs opportunities is the private sector and private sector is very demanding. They want high skilled labor and uh, considering women have um, very limited opportunities for uh, further training after they finish the university, it's very hard for them to find jobs afterward with the labor market, with the private sector. This is one challenge we face. Uh, the other challenge is I think uh, mostly because uh, we, we live in a traditionally a traditional society that uh, for women to, to work in a mixed environment, it's still an issue. So there are only a few of us who are lucky enough to be able to work in a mixed environment and to travel. And, but many, many others are not able, uh, family restrictions and other, otherwise they cannot. Um, the other challenges, I think, um, Women participation in politics it's still it's still very limited. Though many um, uh, what you call, uh, political parties when before voting, they approach women and they uh, attract women as voters, but none of them want to nominate women as candidates because they are afraid that they are not going to be selected. Uh, for, for uh, you know, to, to participate in the parliament or anything, uh, because for be, just for being a woman. So there are some, uh, I mean, I'll give you an example. For example, we have only one woman in the parliament now. We have two before, <laughs> but now we went down to one. So this is one of the challenges we, we uh, a few of the challenges we have. And so are there any organizations that, that help women improve their social standing, enhance their social standing in, uh, in your countries? For instance, in Saudi Arabia, Iman. Well, uh, if I talk about, yeah, I, I think there are, I mean, but still there are lots of, certain things have been done and more things are to be done. I can give you examples of some NGOs and uh, com private uh, corporations. My college, for example, that I belong to, Wafa College, is an example as well of a, a private non-profit organization that has decided to uh, not only to educate uh, ladies and who come from uh, rich um, families and so on and can afford the private in education, but at the same time adopt something like the web program and be able to, with a minimal fee, provide the IT skills and the professional development for ladies who are just high school graduates, people who have been staying at home and not find any outlet, or even um, ladies who are working in places but they would like to um, uh, upgrade themselves and develop themselves. Uh, similar, uh, some there are some kind of projects as well are running with, for example, national um, the bank, uh, the national bank. They do small businesses thing. There's uh, uh, similar kind of um, uh, possibilities. So they teach the ladies the crafts, the uh, certain kind of, uh, so they can build themselves into um, a, a sustainable business mm -hmm. and then can afford to um, run um, their life, okay, and control their li life, especially because there is a high rate of divorced ladies and who've got no uh, body to look after them and so on. So these are, uh, whether they are Saudis or non-Saudis, because there's, there's some, some organization work on that side and others work on the other side. Charitable societies there are. But I have to say, uh, despite the, of the work um, that has been done, still lots needs to be done mm -hmm. more. So I think it's, a, it's an area that uh, needs to be developed further. And that's why the WET program and similar kind of programs are really in need, you know, people are in need for them. Okay, so to, to that point, why, why is technology important or is it important in, in that context to help empower women? So with that, for instance, in the context of, um, of Morocco, how can technology help uh, technology in Morocco is very important for women because uh, they have been marginalized in this area. It's a male oriented, still a male oriented uh, sector in Morocco. Uh, most engineers, they are male, they are men rather than women. And uh, it is relevant to them as a way, of course, to improve their professional lives, as uh, to have good careers and also good jobs and the same opportunities like their fellows, their, their, like, like men. And also uh, to improve themselves in the business area because ev everything right now is done through technology, through email, through internet. And these women, they really need these skills so that they can, uh, reach equal opportunities like, like men. I'm speaking in the case of Morocco because uh, we have been active in different areas for women 
uh, like the legal system have been approved and we had the family code. Uh, we had uh, reforms in, in the area of the health sector. Uh, we had different reforms, but still in the area of IT uh, and technology, there are still needs that needs to be satisfied for women so that they can reach uh, that same level like, like men. And Iman, you're shaking your head. Is that the same, the same in, in Jordan? Um, yes, I think it's the same everywhere. Uh, technology is, is an integral part of our lives, whether we like it or not, whether it's in the Middle East or in the US, anywhere in the world. Um, uh, technology is, is key for success in the professional field. Um, uh, the first question, I think this is the same everywhere, the first question that uh, you are asked when you apply for a job is what are your computer skills? And that is very important uh, for women to excel and to enter the workforce and to excel in that area. It is very important that they have the needed computer skills, at least the basics. Um, it's also, of course, very important for communication between, uh, between people. Um, in one of our trainings, uh, a woman in her mid-50s came up to me and she said, can I now uh, learn how to use the compu computer? And I told her, of course. And she said, because I want to communicate with my son who's living in the States. And, and that's, that's so important and very interesting because it's not just entering the workforce. It's also for just uh, facilitating communication throughout the world. Um, I would also like to add that uh, technology is also very important for women who want to start their own businesses. It's a way for them to see, it's a window for them to see the world and how, for instance, their small businesses can uh, grow or how, for instance, uh, tailoring is, is done in other countries and how she can improve her business as well. So I think uh, technology is, is very important on the business level, educational level, as well as personal level. And Khulud, tell us a bit about Bahrain. How is, how is it different, if at all, in terms of the level of technology adoption or, or how technology is helping empower women? Well, I cannot disagree with my colleagues from Morocco and Jordan. Um, I feel the same way exactly about that. And I guess for us, it's, it's a different case because we can only measure the extent of success of our reforms through women out there. What are they doing? How is it different for them from 10 years ago? And I guess without having any basic computer skills or not being employed because your lack of any experience in, uh, computer, in the computer field, um, of course, then you're not going to see a lot of women out there. So it just shows you how important it is to have those basic skills just to get out in the market and create your independence Great. So, which brings me to why why bloggers? So you chose to to have a training on on blogger. Um, why and how how will that help? Maybe Nada, could you speak to that? Uh, blogging for our country, our and especially our participants in it, uh, can help them in many ways because they can exchange their ideas, they can share opinion with uh, people from other culture. Uh, where we have, you know, in Lebanon we have the women, we have. Uh, contradiction in both ways you have people who are involved in uh, uh, everything all over the world and in the glo uh, globalization and we have people and we have especially women in the rural area that uh, are afraid or scared from the computer and they don't uh, they know nothing about it so uh, blogging is very important for them uh, on, on the social level uh, to share these ideas and exchange uh, Everything they would like people, uh, other people from other countries to know about them, they can post it on uh, their uh, blog. Uh, and uh, for the market, for our uh, participants who work on micro enterprises or small business or any, uh, they have any other skill, they can promote, they can market, they can find a job through their blog. So it's very important. Great. So you're going to go and you're going to help people get trained on, on Blogger. Let's assume that I'm a woman today in, in one of your countries and I want to sign up for one of those training sessions or any other kind of training, professional training, uh, technical training. Would I be facing any challenges to do that? And are there organizations that can, that can help me do that? Lina, maybe any thoughts on that? Well, since we are ourselves as a lead organization, we are providing this type of training uh -huh. and for a very um, accessible fees. I think 
that will be easy. In addition to that, there are so many organizations outside the capital that provide that. And is it easy for me to come and sign up, or are there any obstacles that I would have to deal with in order to sign up? No, there is no obstacles. Actually, we do a lot of marketing to encourage women to come and, and apply for the, pro uh, for the program. And uh, since we, um, we realize that we live in a very conservative society, so our lead organization in Sana'a, which is the capital, uh, provides services for women only. So it's in a woman only environment. This is how, you know, it differs, of course, from Sana'a to mm -hmm. other places, but in Sana'a, that's what we provide in a woman-only environment. This is how the society uh, accepts it more. So it, it will be uh, no challenges at all. <laughs> and Iman, is it, the same, is it the same in Saudi? Is it easy for women to go well, and sign up? I'm just thinking of one of the obstacles that m some of the women actually can face is transportation, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they are living in a far further places from the city and so on. It's not always handy for them to have drivers or to drive them to the place. So they sometimes they need that support. Um, sometimes they are, you know, I'm just wondering about people who are even their uh, income doesn't allow even the minimum, the thing that uh, that is not there. So we're always on the search for uh, finding fundings to um, support them with scholarships and so on and try to um, give access to these ladies. So because there are some people might not even have this kind of minimal fee even. Uh -huh. So um, there is a sometimes an, we have an office of scholarship that uh, is working in the college. I'm sure also it happens in certain companies you have these um, the so, uh, social responsibility um, offices which are coming now into being. We're not there, you know, a few years before, but the, the so starting actually to think of, I mean, uh, from the educational point of view and, you know, social point of view, do, are there people in the community who need help and need education, something like basic skills like these? Can we, so sometimes we go around and ask these companies, could you please come and help us? I mean, do you have any kind of possibilities to fund these ladies? Sometimes we're successful, sometimes we're not. I mean, sometimes people want to give you materials rather than give you money, they give you computers and so on. So it's it's an outlet because it's, it's as I said, it's an obstacle for some ladies. They might get the training, but they don't have the computer. So do you see where, I, so they can yeah. learn in our labs, but when they go home, they don't have any. So um, there are some obstacles, definitely, but you know, uh, all, uh, it differs, you know, from uh, one place to the other, but I'm just talking generally about, you know, what we see here in Saudi Arabia. Um, so, okay. yeah, if I may, ahead. I'd like to add something. Um, there are some things that we take for granted, like for instance, transportation. Uh, we don't understand how very difficult it is for some women to just get to the area that we provide the training in. We work in very underprivileged areas. Um, it would mean that they cannot pay anything for the transportation, they will be ambitious. They want to take, the, to take the training. They want to improve their lives. But so many things that would not even come to your mind makes a difference in, 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 in un, um, not making it possible for them to attend the training. Also, Dr. Iman said another, another thing is that we provide the training on the computer skills and so forth, but when they go back home, they don't have computers at home. So that is another challenge. It's very important that, uh, um, I don't know, I mean, uh, to find some kind of uh, support from I mean, any side to, to enable these women to go back home and to practice on what they learned and just to make it so, um, you know, make it hands on, not just an hour that they take the training for and then they go back home and they forget the whole thing. So we do face some challenges in these underserved areas. So to that point, are there any, have you felt any kind of support from the government mm -hmm. or from the private sector to address those challenges specifically? In Jordan's case, uh, it differs from one country to another. Of course. Um, in Jordan's case, the, the program is relatively new. Um, we just recently started the training. But uh, I do have some experience with the public sector, the government sector. I haven't touched on the private sector yet. But uh, they have uh, showed interest in, 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 uh, in helping out with this program and also providing training for, for women in other areas. But uh, like, for instance, the, the, the sorry, it's the Nash and ITC, a National Information Technology Center. It's a government institution that, uh, of course, cares for a, a technology in Jordan. Um, 
there's something called knowledge stations. There are co basically computer labs that are uh, situated in like 130 areas throughout the kingdom. And, and f of the four areas that we are implementing the program, three of them are implemented in the knowledge station. So that is government support. Um, we also have the, uh, the Royal Scientific Society in which we uh, did the launch Women in Technology in. They've also showed interest in, in providing extra training for women in other areas other than IT and the professional development. But I'm sure that if we uh, do try to connect with the private sector, they will be able to, to help out. And Abir, tell us a bit about Oman. Have you felt the same sort of challenges and are you getting any support from whether it's the government or the private sector? Uh, yeah, we, we did face challenges at the beginning, but uh, thank God we have, we have support from private and pri uh, government sector. Uh, private sector has helped us by donating computers, by donating uh, money to expand our services to regions where girls can't come uh, to, to have WIT courses. So through these donations and through the support we get from private and government sector, we try to expand our services as much as possible across the Sultanate. And so if we were to you know, consider a corporation like, like Google or any other uh, international corporation, what is it that they can do to, to help and support? What specific ideas or initiatives ca could they engage in in order to help address these challenges? Widad, any thoughts specifically for, for Morocco, for instance? Well, um, Google in Morocco is well known as a search tool, but as a corporate or, you know, the philosophy of the corporate is not well known in, in Morocco, basically because people are used more used to other, you know, companies that have representation there and they provide trainings, for example. So, what we would I would hope to see, uh, you know, from Google is uh, the possibility to provide trainings like what we did today for blogging, for example, for us. Mm -hmm. I would see. Um, I would love to see something the same. But for, for women, of course, this is something that we had today and we benefited from. And of course, we will benefit other women through uh, you know, our work directly with them. But there are all the time more needs. There is all the time, it ne nothing, it's never enough. There are, uh, we, are, we, all, uh, we all the time need more support, more trainings, more. Uh, and also for, for Google, for example, there are, uh, uh, it has developed a lot of features very that makes you know someone's life easy and also you know work because you can become very organized through you know the feature if you can if you know how to use the features that are developed by Google and the products that are provided by Google and so uh, people sh needs to be aware of what Google offers as products and de and uh, for also for de these features and uh, it's really uh, interesting uh, before I came here, I mean, uh, to, to the same, uh, the first time, I read the book, uh, the, the word is flat, I, f I forgot the, the name of the author, but it's really interesting, the concept of this book, a, a, in, the, in the sense, in how it shows that technology, it makes the word flat. In our countries, in some areas, the word is really not flat because technology has not really arrived there, especially and mainly for these women. So really, uh, I hope to see Google and uh, uh, our program, the Women in Technology program, help into you know, flattening the word in these areas. That's great. Any other thoughts yeah. on Nada? Having Google involved in our program give us a push or uh, add something for, to the program, especially because you know the quality of the service we provide for, for these people is very uh, on a high level. Uh, in our country, in Lebanon, we have a lot of competition uh, and uh, a lot of services provide uh, institution providing computer and even you know uh, but it is related uh, to political parties and uh, to international association or private uh, private sector but uh, giving uh, this package of quality of this program is totally different from the other services so when uh, these ladies even though they have no background about the computer when they heard about uh, big names like Google or uh, our partner Microsoft or any 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 big companies uh, international in the world, they will be uh, they will it will encourage them to to join this program and to have this certificate and to to be uh, 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 a participant on a Google program or anything any service that Google can have. That's great. So, just shifting gears for for a minute, um, what would you say? Who would you say are the role models? 
um, that women look up to in your, in your countries? Um, if I may. <laughs> um, basically, uh, role models are, are the same all over the world. They are accomplished women, they are educated women, they are self-confident women, and they are women who uh, do not depend on others to, to improve their lives. So, um, and it's also very important that uh, they are financially independent because if you're financially independent, you are basically independent in, in so many other ways. So, um, at least this is what I would say from a Jordan's perspective, that these are uh, the traits of a uh, role model. And are there specific personalities you can think of that, are, that embody these values in, in each one of your markets? There Go ahead. Are. I mean, I'm just. Uh, I mean, I don't have to mention names, but in a way, um, in, I've I've seen, you know, like, uh, uh, for me, I mean, like the dean of my college, or there are certain um, uh, uh, professors working in a college, or ladies who are have tried to come and be uh, business women in the society um, in Saudi Arabia. There are a number of people. We. Uh, it's uh, interesting. We had done a survey with these ladies. You know, some of the web program to know. Uh, in preparation for bringing lectures to you know talk to these ladies and they spotted out immediately these ladies i mean th there are a number there's a dr so and so and dr so and so and i would like to be like her this lady is independent i know that you know maybe she had a, a, a difficult life but at the end she managed to get it you know and, and she's trying now to go into the chamber of commerce to be a member this lady is doing this and that. And I was so interested that the ladies, you know, although they come from um, unprivileged areas, they, they always look up to them, you know, they know, you know, that these are the good ones and they would like to be like them. And therefore, whenever they are getting into these classes and doing computer and so on, they feel that they are approaching that road to that end, you know, that I That's can great. be one day like this. I can continue my study. I can do my PhD maybe in the future one day. Uh, and become something and so on. So that gets you going, you know, and say, yes, I'm doing something. Me, myself, and the trainers around, they say, yes, we're doing something good. That's yes. great. On that hopeful and, and bright note, um, I think we're going to open it up to the, to the audience for questions. Are there any questions you would like to ask um, our panelists? John Hunter, with the mic. My name is Richard Robert. I'm actually from Lebanon from many years ago. Uh, I have a question about, uh, for you about the lack of Arabic content on the internet and how you deal with it, given that uh, you, you're dealing with people from underprivileged societies that would not have possibly like you know, a second or third language. Yeah, just that there's a mic. Well, um, if we can add more Arabic content to the internet, more websites, educational websites, I think that would encourage women from all of our region to be more interested in computers and enhancing their computer skills because there would be something out there that they could enjoy. Uh, because a lot of them who do not have any skills, any computer skills, would find it even difficult to browse through English websites because they're not going to be able to really relate to it. But if you have Arabic out there, then of course, you're going to get addicted to it, just like English speakers. Can I add something? Please. Yeah, please. Well, there is also the, the, the idea that uh, we're within the WET program, to, as part of expanding it, that we might touch on um, areas on our own in each country, I'm, not, I'm talking about maybe in Saudi Arabia, that we're looking also into improving the language skills of the ladies because it's uh, in, in corporations, again, in, in our countries, whenever you go, it's not the IT skills only, but languages that you have. So therefore, I mean, we're, we're touching based on that and we're starting to find solutions, even with the WET program and adding components or finding, and then the following stage, we are focusing on that. So in a way, to connect the people, um, 
it would be great to have the Arabic. I agree with you, and that will be uh, because it increases the visibility of these ladies and the ones who cannot actually with bloggers they can add on their experience. They can talk about that, but at the same time they want to be. We want to connect them to the world, and the world still sometimes you know you can get it into English. That's the quickest way. So again, if you improve on the language, you have uh, done what you have professionally developed them and give them more opportunity to go into the job, and at the same time connect with different kind of websites they can communicate with. So I'm curious, what do uh, the women in your areas really enjoy doing on the internet? Like what, do they enjoy um, writing blogs? Do they enjoy sharing, you know, recipes? You know, reading about kids? <laughs> Chatting. <laughs> Chatting, yeah. Uh, we have some ladies uh, that have uh, are about 60 years or 70 years. I have a lady about 70 years old. And uh, she has uh, her son living abroad. She couldn't connect with him any time. Now with chatting, she's connecting with her, with her son and she's enjoying that. And this is a, uh, an example, but uh, most of them like chatting. So far, because we're on the first level, we recently started the program. I think it also depends on the person themselves. Um, it, it, it's their interests. Uh, a lot of women are interested, of course, in cooking. So that could be an interest for them. And I think in the Middle East, the North Africa region, we do um, appreciate food, good food. <laughs> <laughs> so that could be a good area to, to use the internet for. Can I say, can I add something? Because some of um, our... Um, members are also ladies who are trying to continue their education and I found that some of them actually are starting to look at more educational stuff as well. I mean there are you know some of them uh, even looking for having uh, they finished their degree and they want to have a master. So what did they do? They, but they, they actually they couldn't actually use the internet before. They, when they go to college, because the colleges and universities are still traditional, they, are not, they don't tell the students or teach them how to go into the internet or browse or whatever. But this kind of uh, uh, training that we have done uh, with them have managed to help them to go into the internet and search and even you know, try to improve their language to be able to read these kind of references that are available on, on, on sites and websites. Um, kind of along the same lines, I wondered what specific skills are you training the women in and what particular applications? One, and then just out of curiosity, how did all of you learn to speak English <laughs> so well? I'm sure in some of your countries you, you probably speak English, but some of you may not, so I'm just curious to know. Yeah, it's, it is a group answer indeed. <laughs> yeah, about the type of training, we provide them with um, um, Microsoft package, which is what we call uh, unlimited potentials, which basically eight applications ranging from Microsoft Word, Excel access to website design, simple website design, and uh, um, digital media. So this is the kind of training we provide them uh, regarding the IT skills. But we also, in addition to that, we provide them with what we call professional development workshops. And that's ranging from life skills like communication, interpersonal communication skills, uh, you know, public speaking skill, leadership, uh, uh, letter writing, because that's business writing, uh, different team building, different type of, of training. And how did we come to speak English? <laughs> and French. <laughs> we all have different stories, but uh, I did my master in the US, so I, that's one of the thing. <laughs> Everybody, you can just tell them how you learned English. I started with Sesame Street on TV. Can you imagine this? <laughs> Always a good way to start. Yeah, that's right. I was, uh, I was, I loved the language. I don't know. I was young and I was watching East TV and I was in Saudi Arabia. That's right. And I was just saying there was this channel coming from Aramco, and it was uh, showing, um, you know, uh, Sesame Street. And I would sit down and say, "Wow!" And I will go and say the words. And my sisters are, "How did you learn this?" 
And I said, I learned it from this one, and I understood. And from then on, but my education was Arabic school and so on, but I had this language, and I felt like, this language is good, I would like to learn yeah. <laughs> And then, but later on, I was lucky, I got a scholarship uh, through uh, the British Council, and I done my master in Liverpool University and my PhD as well, so anyway, that helped as well. <laughs> In Lebanon, we studied both language, uh, English and French, in school, in addition to the Arabic language. I have two. <laughs> well, I went to an American high school back home, and then I did my undergrad um, in Des Moines, Iowa. So, In Morocco, it's uh, our second language is French. But for me, I did French, and uh, I earned also a BA degree in uh, English literature. And then I prepared my master's in uh, international studies and diplomacy, and it was all courses were in English because I studied in American University in Morocco. Um, as for me, um, I lived a couple of years back uh, as a child in the States. Um, but then I came back home, I still liked the language, and I studied English uh, literature. And then I went into teaching in English as well, so. Uh, as in Oman, we, we learn English and Arabic from school, but we, we learn more English in private schools and high education. I was wondering if there are any uh, men involved in, in the organization, in the workshops, in the training, and, and what sure. kinds of... It's over there. <laughs> well, specifically back in the Middle East, not, um, not over here. Well, but. the IT coordinators, um, we have some males on the team so who can help us and, you know, solve problems more, <laughs> more into technical stuff. We also have the trainers, some of them, they are men sometimes, and uh, these men, they are also willing to help women and train them in IT in, and also uh, professional development. In the case of Morocco, we have uh, eight trainers, women in professional development, and two of them men, and uh, for the other countries, I would assume that they have men also on their teams. Are you talking about just training, trainers, or just no. participants? Because I would like to add that we have actually men participants. Oh. They were very much interested to be part of the program. And though we don't do it in all areas, but we have the rural areas, we encourage them to do it. We, the, they do it, the organization do it as an initiative. And we find that is very interesting. When you have a program that is gender specific, sometimes it creates some kind of conflicts because people say, why woman? We, we also need these skills. <laughs> so we said the organization approached us and said, can we provide it to men too? So you don't mind, if they don't mind having a certificate saying woman in technology, we don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's what, uh, what we do. So there's time for one last question. And we have also the men uh, on the women's family who, are benefit, uh, who benefit from the program <laughs> indirectly. It's great to hear about the women's initiatives that you all have going. I was wondering if you're aware of any initiatives to get young girls involved in technology earlier. Um, women in Technology um, is a program for all women. It does not, it's not specific to an age group. Um, we always say that if you're ambitious, this is the training for you. So it does not, does not matter if you're uh, young or if you're old or whatever. It's just women interested in, in technology. Uh, the, same, the same case in Oman. We have different levels of women that enter the WIT courses. We have high school graduate dropouts, even stay-at-home mothers that they're interested in, in completing the WIT courses. And we have uh, young women uh, in universities who would like to improve their skills in computer. Great. Well, thank you very much for being here. This was great. And thank you to the audience. I hope this has, uh, for those of you who are not from this part of the world, that it has helped you understand a bit better what the Middle East and North Africa is all about. And if you, if you want to hang around and, and ask more questions to our panelists, by all means, please do so. Thank you. Thank you.